ones, but I'm going to talk about this one. When a client engages in target behavior, such as physical aggression, verbal aggression and property destruction, what procedures do you use for getting them to calm down? Um, so this person says they put them in a chair, block aggression and wait for them to calm down and then set a timer so that the target behaviors are not reinforced. Um, and then they block escape. So they don't hold them down, but they're blocking their escape. So um, I think the first thing is what's the function? So if the function is escape, um, well, I mean, either way, they, they have to calm down, but it helps to know the function so that you can know whether there's follow through or what the, what the consequence strategy is gonna be. Um, and the other thing I say is that when you're teaching students to calm down, I think that a lot of that teaching has to be done proactively so that calming down becomes a neutral activity. Like it, it's a skill, right? Calming down is a skill. And the more that we tell a student when they're all worked up, all of a sudden the calming strategies come out, like it's obviously going to be paired with that feeling of like feeling worked up and feeling anxious and being upset. So I think a lot of teaching has to be done in teaching our students how to calm down um, so that in the moment you're able to support them and you're able to prompt them through it, but it's not new to them. It's not all of a sudden coming out in the moment when they're just really upset. Um, so finding out what does work to calm the student down. And I think the message, the important message is that um, it's okay to be upset. We all get upset. Um, it's not that we're trying to like punish the behavior of the, the emotion or the feeling, but it's that we want to give them an appropriate alternative. Like how do we deal with the emotions? And that's where a lot of the teaching comes in is that um, we're not reinforcing our students for never getting upset. We're not reinforcing them for like, you know, never showing emotions or being angry, but we want to offer them lots of reinforcement for dealing with it appropriately. Um, so even in the classrooms that I deal with, we, uh, we don't just, we use like the zone system. So we'll use the red, yellow, green, and we don't phrase it as like, you're only getting reinforcement when you're green, but we'll phrase it as you get lots of reinforcement when you can bring yourself from yellow to green. Um, so it's okay to have those feelings, but we want to give them the strategies on how to deal with it. Um, if your student doesn't yet have the strategies and obviously keeping them safe and keeping yourself safe are going to, you know, be the priority while you're dealing with it and um, having them be in a safe location so that they're not, they're not hurting anybody um, or not, you know, property destruction is also an issue. My question so, was, sorry, Sherry, to cut in. My question was, do you really have to put them in a chair to calm down? I totally understand the safety issue and I understand the, the safety issue for other students as well. Um, but I always joke around, you know, if you put me, or if, if you tell me what to do as I'm really angry, I'm going to tell you where to go, right? You know, if someone's trying to not necessarily restrain me, but kind of keep me in one spot, um, assuming I was aggressive, um, I think that I would be kind of angrier with that. So, you know, the question is, do you really have to put them in a chair for safety reasons? If you do, you do, that's fine. Um, but other looking at other alternatives, you know, could you clear the room instead? Could you get other students out of the room so that the safety of the other students isn't, um, you know, isn't um, compromised? Um, could you, you know, escort them to a room where they could feel safer. So somewhere where they're, you know, it's free of distractions or free of anything that they could hurt themselves with. Um, could you somehow create some type of neutral calm down area, you know, with a beanbag chair, with, you know, uh, some neutral activities that they could use to calm down, et cetera. So looking at your space itself and seeing if, you know, there's an alternative place to have them as they're engaging in negative behavior is also great. Um, and I think the big take home message here from Shira is making sure that you're practicing this outside of when they're, you know, having an aggression or having a temper tantrum, um, you know, when they're engaging in the negative behavior. So that consequence, the ABC the you know, in the C category is not the time to teach. It's not a good time to teach. You know, you're escalated, they're escalated. Um, it's not, nothing's going in. It's really about just calming down at that point in time. Um, when you are, you know, practicing when the, you know, when the student is in, you know, a calmer space, um, that is the time to teach. That's when you say, hey, listen, we're going to practice some deep breathing. We're going to practice zones of regulation. We're going to practice this and we're going to practice that um, and get that fluent when they're calm versus when they're already heightened 